Come in at number 5 we have Demon in the Basement. This recording comes from 2007, it took place in a home in Philadelphia. The owners started to notice weird sounds coming from their basement during the night. They decided to investigate the noises by placing recording devices in the basement to hopefully capture the noise and figure out what might be causing it. Three nights pass and no noise was picked up on the recordings. Then on the fourth night they captured some very angry sounding audio. People believe these noises were in fact from a demon who was residing in the couple's basement. It appears to be very angry. The noise occurred around 3 am, which is commonly known as the devil's hour, making this even more chilling. They also included that they found no other evidence as to what was making the noise, so this case remained unsolved. I think if I heard this in my basement, my house would be for sale the next day. Actually, it would probably be in flames. Get a match. That's a lighter. But you get the point. <laughs> Coming in at number four, the exorcism of Annalise Michelle. Annalise Michelle was a German woman who led a tragically short life, later being used for inspiration in the film The Exorcism of Emily Rose. She underwent 67 exorcisms during her 23 years of life. There are numerous recordings and photos from her time being treated. It is believed that she was possessed by Lucifer and various other demons. There are reports that she had violent outbursts, ate insects, and drank her own urine. Her tapes are all in German, but that doesn't take away from the horrifying nature of the recording. What do you think? Does it sound like she was possessed by Lucifer? Her parents and the priest were later charged with neglect for torturing her over the course of 10 months. When she was found dead in her home, her knees were broken and she had starved to death. So sad. In at number 3 we have the Enfield Haunting Recordings. The Enfield Haunting took place in Brimsdown, Enfield, London, England between 1977 and 1979 involving two sisters aged 11 and 14. I have to say a lot of these recordings have a lot of superstition and non-believers but most people who look into the Enfield Haunting can't help but believe it was a demonic possession. The haunting ran throughout the household, chairs moved, children levitated and then there were the voices. Apparently the two girls were both known to speak in voices that resembled something Something like an old cockney man. Janet, Margaret, and Betty are all asleep when he's talking. Sleep when I'm talking. I'm not. I'm not. Drive the soap, wear the soap, mark the soap. People have even commented on how during the recording one girl can be heard with two voices at once, something that the young girl would not be able to do herself. It is enough to make the biggest skeptic a believer. And of course, it was the inspiration for The Conjuring 2, which was arguably the superior conjuring movie. Fight me. Come in and have a do we have the demonic person. This recording takes place while a pastor was attempting to cast out a demon from a woman. The woman describes what it is like in hell. She is clearly distressed and asking for forgiveness to cast out the demon. The video itself comes with a warning that the woman was rescued just in time, but not everyone will be as fortunate. There are Bible passages before the audio plays to try and protect those listening from the demon who inhabits the woman. You don't like nobody? Oh, I hate everybody. I hate, hate everybody. everybody. I hate everybody. Why? Everybody. We're done to you. We ain't nothing to you. Why you hate us? Because. Because why? Because you guys are just, you get to go to heaven. I just hate you people. Well, you, you were in heaven once. Mm. You could have stayed. Why didn't you stay? Oh, that's thing. Hmm? You can hear the pain in the woman's voice and the torture she is feeling. If you can listen until the end of the recording, you are braver than most. But you're not braver than me. Because I'm the bravest. That's a lie. It's a lie, lie, lie. And finally, in number one, we have Siberian Sounds of Hell. This sound broadcast during 2002 on Coast to Coast Art Bell radio show was taken during a Siberian exhibition. It is claimed that during a deep drilling experiment, these sounds were captured from the depths of hell. You can hear screams of pain and torture during the recording. The girl who submitted the sound asked that a warning always be given before they play the recording, as it has bothered her since first listening to it when she was younger. It is true, and I, for one, wish it wasn't. And uh, I warn you, what you are about to hear is very disturbing indeed. <laughs> Freaking freak -y. Those are the sounds in my head. Ah! You know? 
Coming in at number 5 we have Cape May Haunting. This haunting takes place in the Physic Estate. It has long been known to be haunted, but rarely are these things caught on recordings. The mansion was built in 1879 by Dr. Emlyn Physic. He had just turned 21 and moved into the house with his mother and her two maiden sisters. By 1935, all of the family had passed away. The house was then left to a neighbor who had been caring for the family as they grew older. Since then, no one has dared to live in the home. It was purchased by two doctors for a period of time, but one only briefly lived there until his wife demanded they leave due to the hauntings that took place. When he spoke about the hauntings, he said he could not make sense of it. As a man of science, he saw no reason for what was happening in the house. He was even convinced someone could be living inside of the walls, but after an extensive search, no one could be found. The weird thing about this recording is that you can hear what sounds like a child scream, it's mine, but the history of the house doesn't have any mention of a child ever living there. Wow. Some interpret the recording to be a child dropping their marbles as you hear them hit the floor shouting, it's mine. There is no clear answer to who this demonic voice belongs to, but it is very unsettling. In at number 4 we have I Am The Devil. This recording by Ghost Hunter reveals them to have made contact with the devil. You can hear in the recording that the hunter claims that the candles have been blown out, indicating that something was with them. They then ask repeatedly, are you the devil? It is hard for us to hear the response, but you can just make out them saying, yes I am. Yeah, I am the devil. Earlier on in the clip, we also see the dog getting agitated any time the devil speaks. It is long believed that animals have a better connection with the other side than we do, and this could confirm this. The dog is angry and senses danger from the voice recorded within the clip. What? Coming in at number 3 we have Disembodied Demon. A YouTuber known as Mortis the Wizard shared a video with his followers from 1999. This was his first experience attempting to communicate with demons. He explains that back in 1999 very little was known about demons, with the internet not being what it is today. No one was reporting on these types of paranormal interactions. He contacted a priest to teach him all he could about their nature, communicating with and hopefully banishing them. Before they spoke with the demon for the first time, the priest warned him not to show it any fear. As you will hear in the recording, the priest speaks with confidence and authority at all times. The recording starts with the priest challenging the demon to reveal himself. You can then hear the demon groaning. The priest then offers the demon freedom. We unfortunately don't hear the full session. Hopefully the demon agreed to leave. I highly doubt it though. I challenge you. I challenge you. Because I have the power to challenge. And I have the power to... Well, welcome to my clinic. I'm governed by anybody. Now I'm going to mess about with other people. You can get off and do something decent. Yeah, that's Shannon. In at number 2 we have We're Not Dead. This sound comes from the Linda Vista Community Hospital. Ghost hunters visited the hospital to try and communicate with the spirits inside. This recording was captured on an EVP. They left their recording device in the hallway that led to the morgue. They then asked, how were you associated with the hospital? You can hear what seems to be a deep male voice say, We're Not Dead. How were you associated with the hospital? This could be multiple demons who are existing in the area. As we know, demons are not alive in the way we are, so it could be possible that this is what they meant by not dead. It could also be confused spirits who have once patients at the hospital. They may have passed on, but not fully. They may be lost and confused looking for answers. Either way, it is obvious the spirit is not alone, and that is terrifying. And finally, coming in at number one, we have Demon Drowning. This recording was played on a show named Midnight in the Desert, and it came from a couple who explored the paranormal as their hobby. They explained that they had been exploring this house for a number of days. After they had not heard anything, they decided to leave their microphone unattended in the building for a number of hours to see what was captured. They believe that the noises heard can be explained as a woman drowning someone. You can hear the sound of water and a woman talking. They know that there is no running water within the house. Oh. 
If you listen carefully though, you can hear a male voice, possibly a demon telling the woman that she needs to do the drowning. Could this be something that happened in the house a long time ago? The voices in the recording are some of the clearest we get when it comes to the paranormal. Maybe one of you can decipher exactly what the voices are saying. That was another voice. Coming in at number five, we have Will That Be Our Train? This entity was captured during an investigation at an abandoned train station. They stated that only male investigators were present, but the voice heard is clearly female. They also mentioned the incredible power of the entity as she was able to be heard above the sound of the passing train. As the train passes, she appears to say, Will that be our train? Her accent and way of speaking does not match present day dialect. Could this place be a window to another realm or universe? Or maybe the other side? It's unclear where the voice came from, but it is rare to capture something so clear and so powerful. Powerful. Coming in at number four, we have the wandering soul. This tape is extremely unsettling. You can hear what appears to be a lost girl shouting for her father at the start of the clip. She sounds lost. She is looking for someone to help her. You can hear other voices around the little girl's screams. They sound like souls in pain, indicating she might be trapped on the other side. Translating the clip, the little girl is asking to go home with her father and begging him to take her with him. It is unclear where the recording came from and who the little girl is within, but it is chilling to listen to. Coming in at number three, we have Demonic Killer. This recording is from Serial Slayer The Night Stalker. He is known for his string of breakings and entering and violence between June 1984 and August 1985. He was finally caught and brought to justice, but before he was, he left a chilling message on one of the victim's answering machines after his attack. After listening to the tape, many believe the recording to be cursed. And even worse than that, some believe that The Night Stalker himself was in fact possessed. He often proudly spoke of his devotion to Satan and had performed many satanic rituals. It is easy to believe that he was in fact possessed with all of the horrifying acts that he committed the years before he was caught. Coming in at number two, we have terrifying screams. introduced by the paranormal investigator who recorded it. It's also stated that this is the most terrifying EVP he has ever heard. He explained that this was recorded in his sister's bedroom. He said that the building he lives in is only around 10 years old and is a nice place. He said his sister has a tendency to attract bad spirits and had been feeling a negative presence from within her bathroom. During the recording, you can hear her baby crying, but all other noises cannot be explained. You can hear a clicking noise playing throughout, but the origin of this noise is unclear. We then hear a horrifying scream. The scream is clear and loud, yet no one in the house was awoken by it. The investigator was led to believe that this was proof that the apartment was in fact haunted by an evil spirit. And finally coming in at number one, we have Disrupted Radio Station. <laughs> Father Shirley Alley and Jimmy. April 1988, Ruth Manali, wife of Papa Randall Alley. October 1988, Morgan Shoemake, father of Barbara, husband of Elsie Barbara's dad. August 22nd, 1985, Irene Miguel is to T
You're tuned to WKCR FM. This unexplained broadcast came from a late night radio show. As you hear in the start of the recording, the station appears to be playing classical, calming music for its listeners. The song gets interrupted by a loud, high pitched scream like noise. Behind the scream, you hear what sounds like whispers of multiple entities. It then goes completely silent for a while before we hear a female like voice speaking very fast. It is hard to make out exactly what she is saying, but at the end, she clearly says, August 22nd, 1985. It is unclear when the recording took place, but it is believed to be around 1995. There have been some people who have looked into the recording to try and decipher what it could mean. There have been speculations that the voice is listing off the names and dates of people who died in a plane crash. While researching into if this could be true, I found that there was a plane crash on this date. An Air Tours Boeing 737 crashed into Manchester Airport, killing 55 people. It has long been known you can use radio waves to contact the other side. Could this be someone from the plane crash trying to get through?